almost guarantee a Democrat in the White House? Earlier today, Donald Trump threatened the RNC with a third party run. He told The Hill, quote, the RNC has not been supportive. They were always supportive when I was a contributor. I was their fair haired boy. The RNC has been, I think, very foolish. When asked if he would run as a third party candidate, Trump said, I'll have to see how I'm being treated by the Republicans. Absolutely, if they're not fair, that would be a factor. Earlier today, Trump backtracked on this threat. Look, I'm a Republican. I'm a conservative. I'm running. I'm in first place by a lot, it seems, according to all the polls. I want to run as a Republican. I think I'll get the nomination. We'll see soon enough, but I think I'll get the nomination. The best way to win is for me to get the nomination and run probably against Hillary. Hillary is the worst, uh, look, easily. She's the worst Secretary of State in the history of our country. She is going to be beaten, and I'm the one to beat her. He wants to get the nomination, but he didn't answer the question if he would run as the third party candidate. For more, <laughs> let me bring in David Korn, Washington Bureau Chief for Mother Jones and MSNBC political analyst, and also with us tonight, Lanny Davis, former White House counsel and vice president uh, at Levick. Gentlemen, great to have you with us tonight. <laughs> Lanny, you first. You, you, you're not, you're sleeping very good the more publicity that Donald Trump gets, aren't you? I mean, this is, this, this well, is really, mu this is music to your ears as you go to sleep at night, as opposed to the Republicans, isn't it? I've, act I've actually been uh, very, very busy. In fact, I'm on my way right after this appearance to the latest meeting of Democrats for Trump, and we're organizing <laughs> to help them in. Uh, you know, he didn't really back away uh, in that interview. No, no, he didn't answer the question, but he didn't say, no, I won't. It was a threat. And all I can say is, uh, while there's some humor involved, this man is a despicable, repulsive hater who should not be ahead in the polls. And it says a lot about the Republican Party base or people who are so far out that they don't join me in those words, because that's what this yeah. man is. David Korn, I, I was uh, uh, astounded that two sitting United States senators would respond with videos to Donald Trump, especially <laughs> Lindsey Graham. I mean, that to me underscores that this guy is a threat. He's a force and a force to be reckoned with politically. How terrified are the Republicans and how serious is this threat of, of possibly a third candidate if he doesn't get the respect he wants? What do you make of it all? Listen, Donald Trump has shown that he can stay in this race as nominee or as not as nominee for as long as he cares to. He doesn't need to spend money on ads. He gets all the free media he could ask for. Um, he doesn't need to have a big operation. He has his own plane. Um, he, you know, his financial disclosure forms show that he has a lot of cash on hand if he needs to, or at least stocks that he can turn into cash. So this guy can very quickly move from the Republican nomination contest to not a third party run, we call it an independent run, and it's not too difficult to get on the ballot in most states if you do it with the right amount of time. So I do think it's obvious, and this is why Lanny has formed Democrats for Trump, that <laughs> if, he, if he runs, he certainly draws more from the Republicans, uh, whoever the Republican nominee might be, and if you look at states like Florida, Ohio, Virginia swing states, where we anticipate a close match between any Democrat and any Republican, this could be the determining uh, distinction in the, in the results. Yeah. So, uh, so it puts the it puts the Republicans in a very obvious bind. They get they get him too mad, and he takes his ball and he goes on a independent run. And if they treat him too well, he taints the party with his rhetoric and his positions on immigration reform and other things. I mean, Lanny Davis, isn't Donald Trump just saying, you better respect me or there's going to be big trouble ahead? Isn't that really what the message is? And he's not going to pay attention to anybody except the people that are following him? Uh, you know, that's what he's saying. And there's a significant group of Republicans, according to the polls, uh, who are saying to pollsters, I am for him. But I would wonder if you really interviewed them, are you for him just to make a statement on this particular immigration issue? Or do you really think you want him as your president? And that's a big difference. So even as a third party candidate, Ralph Nader got three, four, five percent in 
some states that made the big difference uh, with the election of George W. Bush versus Al Gore. So he can pick up a, a handful of percent in, this, in the battleground states. I'm going to say something pretty historic today. I agree with David Korn. I haven't oh, no. said that very often on... <laughs> I've just ruined David's uh, I'm reputation. getting out of here, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> Won't happen. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, but, you know, but, but the thing is, I do think the important thing about Donald Trump is that he is speaking for a pretty large, significant block of, of, the, of, of grassroots Republican voters. Now, I, I don't think, think it's too. I don't, I don't think it's just an immigration reform, so I will mildly disagree with Lanny on this. I think there, oh, are, you know, there, there are one out of five, one out of four Republican voters who just want a venter in chief. These are the same people who thought that Obama was a secret socialist Muslim who wanted to destroy the country. Country. They hate pressing one or for English and two for Spanish. They're just fed up, and they want a guy, even if they don't agree with everything he says, who's going to speak with anger, with passion, to reflect their own anger and passion. And that's what he's captured, and it shows how far to the right the Tea Party has gone and dragged the Republican Party with it. The party has exploited those voters to win back the House and the Senate, but now they have to live with them. David, with uh, just Lanny a quick Davis, point. I got to ask you. There, there, there's right. a Quinnipiac poll out that shows that voters in Iowa, Virginia, and also Colorado are are struggling with trusting Hillary Clinton. How bad is this for her, if it is at all? Is it a worry for the campaign? Your take? Well, it's certainly a worry that we see uh, results about personal characteristics like trust, and I find that not surprising, consistent with the numbers in the last several months where she's been subject to a lot of uh, criticism on a number of issues in the national media. It's not just the right-wing conspiracy. But on the key issues of qualities to be president, on strong leadership, on fighting back when she's down, uh, all of the polls show that she has strong leadership uh, uh, numbers. And uh, in the general election, yeah. uh, she's still going to be very strong against uh, what will be, I think, a strong candidate if it turns out to be Jeb Bush. And by the way, I just want to say there's a sister soldier moment created here by Donald Trump. Every Republican and Rick Perry looks awfully good uh, now standing up to him. And I think Jeb Bush was the first. Every time that happens, it positions a Republican as standing up to the base on something as crazy as Trump and helps them in the general election. All right. Lanny Davis and David Corn. Gentlemen, great to have you with us tonight. Appreciate your Thank time. You. Sure Thank still you. ahead. Fast